to have our own technology fly in space is something that's quite surreal. You're touching something, you're building something that's going to be doing something amazing. My grandfather <laughs> told me one day that one should keep your own opinion in high regard. You know, in medicine, if you're not the first to do something, find something else to do. I'm Professor André van der Merwe. I'm the head of the Division of Urology at the Tigerberg Medical School, the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences here. I've been a uh, Marty from 1988 to uh, 1993 when I studied medicine here. My name is Gerard Janse van Vieren. Um, I came to Stellenbosch in my first year, studied um, actuarial science for a year, then started studying uh, electronic engineering. I did a master's degree and I now work at CubeSpace. So what CubeSpace does is we manufacture components for small satellites. In my opinion, the, the leadership at the university has got a huge drive to be relevant in Africa, to be locally relevant. If you can create communication, then innovation will happen automatically. We're located in the NetBank Launch Lab. It's um, the kind of the innovation part of Stellenbosch University. Okay, so, welcome to CubeSpace. In 2013, Stellenbosch University got a contract to build 15 control system units uh, for a big project where 50 small satellites are being sent up. And with this big contract came a lot of work. So, uh, Professor Hermann Stein, the head of the satellite engineering department, thought it was a good idea to, to appoint some engineers to work for him on this project. We're not uh, business minded. So where the Launch Lab has also helped us is in the mentoring of the business side of CubeSpace. Through Inurfus and through the Launch Lab, there's a lot of technology which usually starts out as just uh, another research project. In most cases, that can actually be something that, that can be profitable. They helped us to, to create a space where we can commercialize our products, our research. Okay, so this is the Electronic Systems Laboratory. This is basically where the satellite engineering at Stellenbosch University was started. Um, you'll see a, a life-size replica there of, of the first satellite in South Africa called Sunset. And on the left here in the display cabinets, you'll see the rich history of satellite engineering, specifically of Sunset. I think it's over a hundred masters and PhD degrees were awarded based on the work on, on Sunset. Our own Professor Stein did his PhD on the control system of Sunset. We're all 26, 27, except for Professor Stein, his uh, age remains a mystery. This is about 1,000. There's no other company in the world uh, that I'm aware of that specialize in control systems for nanosatellites. There's not many opportunities for uh, masters and PhD students from academic universities to go and work and we don't want them to go overseas and be lost for, for the country. There's always been innovation at universities, so that's the character of a university, but to commercialize it hasn't happened really in the past. Nie allemaal kan innoverend wees nie, maar as jy wil voor en toe gaan jy die drijfkracht en jy wil dink en nie wat goed is, dan moet jy op een ethische manier voor en toe gaan en, 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 en doen. We are at ward A7, which is a transplantation ward. All our kidney transplants are done here. And you know what, when I came here in 2007, nothing really has changed. The campus was very much the same. All these new buildings were not here, that's there now. I was at the time looking for a topic for PhD. And, and I remember one of my mentors from the US, uh, Richard Santucci, he said to me, you know, Andre, you're going to do a lot of work for a PhD. If you do a lot of work, make a big splash, you're going to do a lot of work anyway. One of the patients that were discussed was somebody who lost a penis and I think either got very sick or died. And it just occurred to me that why on earth, when I harvest kidneys for kidney transplant, do I not then also harvest the penis and then we transplant the penis? So you can imagine yourself, if you're a young man going into the, uh, the bush for a circumcision, you, you, you expect to be uh, 
a man after that, you can have sexual intercourse, and you come back from the bush with absolutely nothing, or a non-functioning penis. It is devastating. So many people told me it's not feasible to do. So many people say I'm mad. And weet jij, ik denk die complexiteit van die project komt uit in die feit dat niemand in de wereld kon het nog gekregen krijgen. The fact that we could do the operation successful, the great team of, of doctors, it means a lot to our community, it means a lot to our patients on the waiting list, it means a lot to, to, to the silent uh, mass of people sitting there without a penis. So that this kantoor and the people is not a word of program. So from the whole, from the whole span is, is um, the most important thing. The reality is we, we have only done one penis transplant. But the fact that it created that amount of hope for these young guys was immense. There is innovation happening and it's growing. The technology came from here, it came from research in South Africa, it came from research at our university. That's quite significant, I think, for South Africa to be able to say, we, we have technology like this and uh, we made it ourselves. That's, that's very significant. I think ons as directly ons eie agenda so hard as wat ons die landse agenda druk nie. Ek, ek hoop dat dit is die beeld wat uitkom van mense wat van buiten af na ons maties kyk.